Welcome aboard for another video. Thanks, Conductor Keith. Hello. The purpose of today's video is fourfold. One, I'm going to show you this building over here, which is a false front building that I made from scratch, cheaply, quickly, and easily. I kind of experimented as I went, so I'll just show you what I did. Two, sand, plain sand. Comes in big bags from like hardware kind of places like Home Depot. Dirt cheap. It's a whole pile cheaper than the commercial stuff you get from model railroading. Three, lighting. Easy, easy, cheap, indoor or outdoor for large scale buildings using LED lights. And four, just in general to show you the scenery done in this part of the railway as a bit of a scenery update. And of course, we're gonna have a live steam run. I mean, you know, you can't have one of my videos without trains going. So now that I have the water standpipe done and I've moved some things around, the uh, bare plywood is starting to bother me. So I think I'm gonna do some more scenery work, just at least in this area for now. I mean, that model of the standpipe is so nice, it needs to, you know, be finished. I got some play sand from Home Depot for dirt cheap. It's going to be road material, parking lot material. So let's just see how it goes. Well, I guess I won't be putting the sand on today. It's all damp. You can't maybe tell, but it's, it's damp. And that's going to make it hard to spread without it being lumpy. I need to be able to, like, ground material, spread it on. I also have the bag open for it to dry out a bit, too. Perhaps I'm impatient, but I decided to spread some out in pans to help speed it along. Well, it's overnight. The sand is only partly dry. So I think I'm just gonna put it in there at about 200 degrees Fahrenheit or so, and see what happens. In the meantime, I'd been itching to work on the railway, so I sat around and thought up something else to do. So I've decided to try my hand at making a false front building. All right, I'm going to attempt to cut it out with that, and then I'm gonna cut out another piece, the same size as this, because I'll cut out the windows, and then the piece here will be laminated onto the back, so the windows will be still dark and recessed. And yes, I'm sure other people have done this, uh, <laughs> but I'm making it up as I go. So let's see how that comes together. That'll be there. We'll be glued on to there, okay? And then this will be glued on to there. I got that at the dollar store for literally a dollar fifty. Canadian. Now I know people can make these with their 3D printers. Um, I don't have one yet, so I'll just have some fun until I can get one. All right, so there you have it. I chose clamps that had a very light squeeze. I'm going to use coffee stick stirrers, which I'll cut with my cutter, and start to frame the thing out before painting it. All right, so this has been in the oven for a couple of hours at 250 degrees Fahrenheit. Seems dry. It's, I've had the door open and cracked to let it cool off, and yep, now I can powder it, see? Now I can powder it. That's nice. During that couple of hours, I opened the door a couple times to let the moist air come out. I don't know if that was necessary. But anyway, um, this seems to be successful. When I lived on Vancouver Island, I used to be able to source this stuff uh, for free, but um, I have not found a good spot with uh, really good stuff like this here. Now that it's dried, it, it came out a bit clumpy, but you can break the clump. Okay, Lord Michael's having too much fun. So I've built a jig here, because uh, the wooden pieces, the long wooden pieces, tend to warp when they're wet. So of course I globbed on the glue, put them on the sides here, you can see, side there. Given this is foam core board, I have these pins and the, you know, I've kept every shirt pin, every pin I could find over the years. Boy, do they come in handy. So I just anchor it in, didn't take much, and it's gonna dry straight. Otherwise, I've got a couple pieces just to put in here to, to keep them from warping in there as they dry as well. So I took a pin from here, cut it with that, and I'm just gonna push it in with a little double of glue. Voila. All right, this is the end of day one. Tomorrow will be day two in painting. Mm, I'm not sure I like it there, but we'll see. I suppose I could put print and put a gas station sign on it and put it right there. 
I think I'll ask my friends. So I've received comments back from friends in the United States, all across the United States, South Africa, here in Canada, my brother-in-law Eric down the road, Scotland, England, and Holland. And the general consensus is gas station, but it needs something like an awning out front. So I'm going to build this covered thing right there. Cheap bamboo skewers and coffee sticks. So I've used this paint, which I also used in part on my pond, on Felix's pond on the railway. And I've just smeared one coat over it of this blue. So these plant thingies I took off the side of that building down there. The proprietor of this gas station very likely lives in the small rooms upstairs. Once I settled on a gas station, I just had to name it after my cousin Tracy in Calgary. There's a long history of service stations between Tracy's dad, who I'm named after, and grandpa. Tracy himself followed their tradition, but instead he now maintains the transit trains in Calgary. And January 1940 is when my late uncle and Tracy's dad was born. So I made this sign with a simple graphics program. I wanted a Gulf gas station, and then I found this graphic online which helped me determine my era. This sign, I found on the internet, it's a Canadian, old Canadian post office sign. And Matt of Jeb's Railroad on YouTube sent me an image of this Coca-Cola uh, ice box. Now I'm just using the rulers to scale the signs to put on the building. I'm painting the windows using Tester's Flat Rubber, which means that they won't be completely black, which is nice. Now I want to make those windows shiny, the glass shiny, so I'm going to use acrylic gloss medium. This is the stuff you normally mix with artists' acrylics so that the acrylic doesn't dry just completely flat. But a little tiny bit of coating of that over the windows will make them look, well, reflective. You can see the reflection in the windows there. I, of course, the gloss medium's over top of the curtains too. It makes the curtains kind of look inside. Uh, it looks better to the naked eye than it does on the camera. Meanwhile, while waiting for glue and paint to dry, I decided to be up to something else and so added some lighting to buildings. This is how I lit the station and the goods shed. I got a bunch of cheap extension cords. You can get them, you know, because there's bins of them sometimes at thrift stores or charity stores and cut one end off of the extension cord, cut it off. Now, I got this at a store called Canadian Tire for cheap, but you can get them on Amazon and other places. Takes the E12 light bulb. So you take your cut end and you screw it on here. What I did was I took the part that had writing on it and I screwed it to the positive post in the middle. And then, because you know, LED light bulbs are directional. And you put that back on, drill a hole through the deck, up through. And that way, when you have these on old extension cords, you can turn on all your lights on and off from one power bar. Now these buildings, I already have little LED lights hidden in them and stuff, and I'll do those separate. But the buildings like the goods shed and the station, which are commercially available large scale buildings, uh, easy, just simple, simple, simple. We'll observe. One day I'll probably do a full interior of the train station before placing it down over the light. But now this is just temporary. So that when the trains pass by and we're standing here watching, it looks like there's something in there. And now I'm just going to use some of this just construction paper to make some window shades. You'll also notice some gloss on here all around the bottom and all around the edges is Vaseline, a thin layer of Vaseline. So I'm going to lay this down and I'm going to spread the ground stuff on, glue, soak the ground stuff with glue. And that way, I'm hoping, crossing fingers, the glue doesn't stick to the Vaseline and I'll just be able to lift the building out carefully and to work on the interior and put it back down. All right, so that big bag of sand that I bought, here we go. Put that there, through my strainer. Nothing like kitchen utensils. Now this is never going back to the kitchen. This was specifically gotten used for me to do this. And so I just, you know, la 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 la, like that. And then I just tap any pieces that just might be clumped. La, 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 la. I will use this elsewhere in scenery 
you know, as part of scatter, but there's my road material. Now I just start scattering it with this old Air Canada spoon from back before 9-11. And before going any further, I put some tape down to mine the gaps so I can put the scenery and material right across it. You can see that I've carefully laid down the foundation pieces. They're glued down for the false flat building that goes there. Mm, yeah, it's getting kind of crowded around the neighborhood here as the work is happening. It's like these people think there's going to be a flood. The quartermaster sergeant's not going to be very pleased about this. All right, so I've spread the dirt as far over that way as it can go because the warehouse still has to be built and the, the dock right here. I'm just here spreading the glue, water, washing up liquid mixture. Just, I take my time with this. I use an eyedropper. I just take my time. I find it relaxing. And once I've scattered around all the stuff you see is wet there, it's, I'm just going to soak it all in. In order to adequately show off the building in the background, it is convenient that our narrow gauge, 32 millimeter narrow gauge train here uh, actually needs to go off to the town of Potato. It'll look good when that wall has a painted backdrop. Now, what do you think of this place that sells gasoline and it has a post office too? Well now, Marge, I think it's excellent. Did, did you know that it's owned by Terry's cousin, Tracy? Oh, yes, yes, Henry, I did know that, I did know that. Now, uh, do you think he should be over there smoking? Uh, no, Marge, no, but uh, the real Tracy had stopped smoking years and years ago. A fellow in California named Colton suggested using an arc lighter. It's electric. Flip it up, it's electric. See that? The electricity creates plasma there between the heads. Works really well. All right, so the locomotive is ready. Let's uh, go back and pick up our train. Of course, the Friar is here in his favorite train watching location. He hopes that you've clicked like, that you leave a comment if you want, that you uh, subscribe, but most importantly, share this video so we can help encourage our love of trains. Somewhere in a previous video, I show how I added the headlight to this locomotive.
Poor Tim waving that piece of paper at Ambrose. Ambrose is our comptroller and he does not like expenditures. Mike Hamer was here operating trains with me recently and he said, he made the comment that he's operated on layouts that just have plywood and if the operating scheme is realistic, it's still, you know, the imagination takes over and that's absolutely true. However, I do think it's nice to have some scenery in this area now so that it looks nice and realistic when the train comes to pick up rail cars.